Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. I will be focusing your attention on all the alternative ways of talking about contrast in English or one thing contrasting with another or one thing being in contrast with another without having to repeat the word but again and again and all over again. Are you ready? Of course you are. So let's start watching this video. But before we continue with the rest of today's video, I kindly want you to like this video and support up my small YouTube channel to help it grow. I help you with your English. You please help me with the growth of my YouTube channel too, to let it get exposed to a larger number of students who want to improve their English. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet and let's get started. The first word that we can use as an alternative to but, as an alternative way of talking about one idea contrasting with another or one thing being in contrast with another is however, 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 however. An example, the trip was costly, however, we really enjoyed it. The trip was costly, however, we really enjoyed it. The trip was costly, however, we really enjoyed it, which means the trip was very expensive. It cost us a fortune, a lot of money, but we really enjoyed it. But here, instead of repeating but, we simply replaced it with however to avoid its unnecessary and boring repetition. Now let's move on to the second alternative to but, which is nevertheless, nevertheless, nevertheless. Nevertheless can be used as an alternative way of talking about two contrasting ideas. When one idea contrasts with another, we can either use but, however, or nevertheless. So nevertheless is a word used to link two contrasting sentences or clauses to one another. An example, it was raining heavily. Nevertheless, I decided to go for a walk. It was raining heavily. Nevertheless, I decided to go for a walk. It was raining heavily. Nevertheless, I decided to go for a walk. Which means, it was raining heavily. It was pouring rain. It was raining cats and dogs. Raining heavily. It was pouring rain. But I decided to go for a walk. But instead of repeating but, I used nevertheless. It was raining heavily. Nevertheless, I decided to go for a walk. So you can use all these alternative ways of highlighting and emphasizing two contrasting ideas instead of repeating but in order to add color to your speech and sound more advanced. Now let's move on to the third alternative which is although, although, the word although, although, although. Although can be used to highlight and emphasize two ideas that contrast with one another that stand in sharp or stark contrast with one another. Keep in mind that when you use although, you should not use but. We don't say although x but y. That's wrong. We say although x, although a, then b, which means the idea a contrasts with the idea b. An example, although he had lost his children, he smiled at everyone. Although he had lost his children, he smiled at everyone, although he had lost his children. He smiled at everyone, which means he had lost his children, but he smiled at everyone at the party. He didn't want to give others a negative feeling or the feeling that he was disappointed, he was frustrated, depressed, and despondent. He wanted to put a smile on everyone's face and make everyone happy give everyone or pass on a positive feeling or give everyone a happy feeling. Although he had lost his children, he smiled at everyone. So instead of repeating but, we used although. So up to this point, you learned that instead of repeating but, you can use nevertheless, however, and although. Now let's move on to the next alternative way of talking about contrast in English without repeating but, which is though though, by using the word though, though. Though is pretty similar to although, meaning-wise, and semantically. The only difference is though goes 
to the end of sentences or is put at the end of sentences. An example. I didn't enjoy the trip. It had some good moments though. I didn't enjoy the trip. It had some good moments though. I didn't enjoy the trip. It had some good moments though. Which means I did not enjoy the trip really, but it had some good moments. It had some memorable moments, some pleasurable and enjoyable moments. I cannot say that I did not enjoy the trip at all. Of course, there were some moments and there were some points on the trip at which I felt happy, I enjoyed myself and my time. So, I didn't enjoy the trip. It had some good moments though. So instead of using but, instead of saying I didn't enjoy the trip but it had some good moments, I'm using though at the end of the sentence. The next alternative way of talking about contrast in English instead of repeating but is by using this phrase despite that, despite that, despite that. Despite that is similar to although, however, nonetheless, and also basically and fundamentally but. It can be used with the same meaning as but to highlight and emphasize two contrasting ideas. An example. The project was long and costly. Despite that, it was a great experience. The project was long and costly. Despite that, it was a great experience. The project was long and costly. Despite that, it was a great experience. Which means the project was long and very expensive. It cost us a fortune, a lot of money, a significant amount of money. But it was a great experience. It provided us with a one in a million or once in a lifetime opportunity to learn lots of new things, to get exposed to things that we had never thought one day we would get exposed to or we will learn. So the project was long and costly. Despite that, it was a great experience. The next replacement for but is in spite of that, which is pretty similar to despite that. In spite of that, in spite of that, in spite of that. It can be used in the same way as despite that to talk about two contrasting ideas, to emphasize that one idea contrasts with another or contradicts another. An example, he had little experience in the field. In spite of that, he performed skillfully. He had little experience in the field. In spite of that, he performed skillfully. He had little experience in the field. In spite of that, he performed skillfully. He had little experience in the field. In spite of that, he performed skillfully. Which means he had no experience in the field. He was not experienced in the field at all, but he performed pretty well. But instead of repeating but, I'm saying in spite of that. Or you can also say despite that. You can say nonetheless, nevertheless, however. Now let me focus your attention on the next alternative way of highlighting contrasting ideas, which is by using this phrase in contrast, in contrast, in contrast, in contrast. In contrast can be used to show contrast between two contrasting ideas, two contradicting ideas. An example. David prefers quiet places. In contrast, I love the hustle and bustle of city life. David prefers quiet places. In contrast, I love the hustle and bustle of city life. David prefers quiet places. In contrast, I love the hustle and bustle of city life. First of all, let me tell you what the meaning of the hustle and bustle of something is. The hustle and bustle of city life refers to all the activities done in city, all the noise in a city life, the traffic noise, the noise of people moving around, the noise of, you know, a large number of people or a crowd of people surging forward, moving forward, moving around. So that refers to the hustle and bustle of city life. So that example means David prefers and loves quiet places, but I love crowded places. I enjoy living in crowded places. I enjoy living in noisy and crowded places. Or I enjoy the hustle and bustle of city life. Another alternative way of talking about contrast in English without repeating but is by using whereas. 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 Whereas highlights two contrasting ideas or emphasizes two contrasting ideas and says 
one idea exists and there is also another contrasting idea that exists. So we can use whereas to show contrast between two things. An example, I love the beach, whereas my parents prefer the mountains. I love the beach, whereas my parents prefer the mountains. I love the beach, whereas my parents prefer the mountains, which means I love the beach, but my parents prefer the mountains. The next word that you can use as a replacement for but is nonetheless, 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 to show contrast, to highlight two contrasting ideas. An example, I'm very busy. Nonetheless, I spend time with my family. I'm very busy. Nonetheless, I spend time with my family. I'm very busy. Nonetheless, I spend time with my family, which means I'm very busy doing lots of things, but however, nevertheless, nonetheless, in contrast, despite that, in spite of that, I do my best to spend time with my family. And finally, we get to the last alternative way of talking about contrast in English instead of repeating the word but, which is by using this adverb, conversely, conversely, conversely. Conversely shows contrast, highlights contrast, or emphasizes two contrasting ideas, emphasizes the fact that one idea contradicts another or contrasts with another. An example, my sister lives independently. Conversely, I'm attached to my parents. My sister lives independently. Conversely, I'm attached to my parents. My sister lives independently. Conversely, I'm attached to my parents, which means my sister is an independent woman. She lives independently of my parents, but I'm pretty much dependent on my parents. I'm attached to them. And I cannot think of living without them or living away from them. So instead of repeating but, we used conversely. And that's about all, guys. In today's video, you learned some pretty useful alternatives to the word but instead of repeating this word. Now, I kindly want you to like this video in support of my small YouTube channel to help it grow and get exposed to a large number of students who are enthusiastic about learning English and improving their English skills. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet and leave a positive comment down below for your YouTube English teacher to fill him with the energy he needs to keep making these videos for you. I'll be back soon.